what do you know about this virus, the novel coronavirus that we don't that 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 is not being talked about? But you're like, mm-hmm. why aren't they talking about this? <laughs> why aren't they talking about this as it relates to this COVID nineteen? Mm-hmm. Well, I think one thing that people don't know is that the SARS-CoV-2 is literally version two of a coronavirus that first circulated in this world back in 2003. And so many people aren't aware of that and aren't aware that we have known that viruses were going to become the emerging infectious disease crisis point around the world as far back as 2003. And to be quite honest, since 9-11, one of the primary targets that we knew could be a potential chaotic outbreak for the world would be if viruses were released or became rampant. Now, I'm not saying this virus was created. It was not. This is a virus that is naturally occurring within the animal kingdom, but it actually is coming to us at a point when we need to consider a lot of things in our human existence. The truth is we have not been the best stewards of our planet. We've been encroaching on the spaces of our wildlife all over the world, which meant we're coming into more and more contact with animals that are harboring or reservoirs for viruses that we haven't yet been exposed to in terms of our immune system. Our um, ravaging of the planet, this uh, wanton, just disregard of many things when it comes to waterways, et cetera, we're starting to see the impact. And that's what viruses directly mean for us. But also viruses mean miscarriages. Viruses mean a loss of humanity's future propagation. And in the time of the world where we're not making as many babies as we were 50 to 100 years ago, this is a major, major thing that we have to think about is what is our role? Americans aren't. Africa's populating is, is, is <laughs> Africa's population. Their is, parts. Shout yes. out to Nigeria and Ghana. Amen. Uh, largest. Yes. Yeah, they they're having babies. Uh, they're the Dr. fifth Cindy, most populous in the world. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke is here. Uh, as you as you talk about the virus and immunity, I'm, a lot of people are like, why don't you have people on to talk about how we could just build our immune system instead of taking the vaccine? Mm-hmm. Why don't you talk more about building up the immune system? Da, 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 da. Why don't you bring on Gary Noel, mm-hmm. who I love, you know, but I feel like, you know, it's like homeostasis. Can we get to a place of yes. balance first? A balance, start- exactly. But like this thing is so talk. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Well, I feel strongly that you should be building up your immune system at all times, eat healthy, exercise, et cetera. But I also have to tell you, it's not an either or it's an and it's, eating healthy, taking care of yourself, and getting vaccinated. The truth is vaccines are necessary to actually stop this virus from propagating and stop it from killing us in the rate it is. Just to give people an example, you know, it's scary HIV, that virus that scares all of us. From the time HIV was discovered up until now, about 750,000 Americans have died from HIV total over 35 years. Karen, we've lost 750,000 Americans to COVID in the last two years, less than two years. You know, but the difference, I don't even say the difference. I I feel like I, you know, you have to do something, either blood transfusion or have some sort of sex with somebody or, you know, exchange blood Mm -hmm. to, to get HIV. COVID is airborne. It's airborne, which is why we need to be vaccinated, right? So if people are scared of HIV, why aren't they scared of what can happen when you don't even have to be in direct proximity to someone? You just have to be within air shot of them, so to speak, emphasis on AI air. AIR ear. But I think the other reason why I brought up the HIV example is we are doing a much better job in reaching our communities, especially communities of color, talking about HIV and the risk of HIV than we are about talking about the risk that COVID poses and the fact that we're dying in unprecedented numbers. But if we were not to think about the ones who were dying, we're also disabling our communities in unprecedented numbers, right? The number of people who are surviving COVID 
but surviving with disability, surviving with brain fog, surviving with erectile dysfunction, because yes, the virus causes erectile dysfunction, right? There are people surviving, but they've lost their pregnancy, they've lost their baby. We need to talk about this and be real, and the vaccine prevents all of that. The other thing is the scare tactic being used, which is things like, oh, the vaccines are too new, et cetera. They're not new in the context of the science and the design and the fact that they've been studied for over 10 years, including mRNA vaccine technology. And we have to acknowledge that too. Some would say, uh, this is a scare tactic. I'm just telling you what I hear, mm-hmm. what I see. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let mm-hmm. me just say the vast majority of people are vaccinated. And today yes. um, I was talking to one of my partners, one of my narrative partners and his little girl just got vaccinated. And he was so happy and, and her arm hurts. So her good. mom was like, yeah, <laughs> do you want to stay home? She was like, no, I have a math test today. So eight years old, she's, you <laughs> know, girl so to proud. my heart. Yeah, Love shout it. out to little Elizabeth. Um, more than thir- 3 million uh, children have been vaccinated uh, since yes. two weeks ago. Uh, the effort between the ages of five and 11, the White House mm-hmm. uh, has encouraged that. Uh, so, you know, so here we are. And and yet there's a very loud contingent of people, uh, you know, contingency mm-hmm. of, of folk who are still, you know, I talked yeah. yesterday about Rock Dunbar. What's his name? Rock D- Dunbar, the actor who mm-hmm. um, like he left that 911 series, that steady paycheck, because he's like, I can't get an exemption and I'm not getting yeah. vaccinated for religious mm-hmm. reasons. Yes. Listen, everybody has a choice. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you can talk a little bit, since you're a virologist, uh, Dr. Cindy, uh, about what this virus actually does, how does it operate so that we can Mm -hmm. kind of like in our mind's eye figure out how we actually are fighting it? Well, let me tell people this first and foremost. Whenever your body encounters a virus that it's never seen before, it takes your immune system 10 to 14 days to actually figure out what's happening to it and to adapt and learn how to clear the virus. The thing about SARS-CoV-2 is within 72 hours of becoming infected, it actually leads to your immune response, which is trying to figure this out, trying to overwhelm itself to clear the virus, but not effectively. And at the same time, the virus has gone viral, pun intended, which is whenever a viral particle gets into a cell, its sole purpose is to get in and make as much of itself, which we call replication as possible. And then that cell bursts opens and all of those new virus spread out to go to more cells. And so within a matter of 24 hours, you have uh, just millions and millions of the virus now circulating in your blood and your immune response, because it doesn't know the specifics of this virus, it's trying to learn, but you're innate or primitive side of the immune system is starting to respond saying, let me see if I can hold it down until the special forces come in and take care of this. But it takes 10 to 14 days for special forces to come in. So in the meantime, your lungs get overwhelmed, your heart gets overwhelmed, your kidneys can get overwhelmed. And this is what's landing people in the hospital, landing people needing oxygen to help them breathe, needing dialysis for their acute kidney failure. And so vaccine is something where you show, I call it a snapshot, right? So it's almost like sending someone um, a Snapchat, a quick picture of, hey, this is what the face of this virus looks like, which is called a spike protein. If you see this, you need to know how to be prepared, learn its face, target it so that the next time you see it, you clear it before it spreads around everywhere, right? And so that's what the vaccine does for you. So could natural infection do that? Uh, Meaning infected with the virus? Yes, but it takes you 14 days. And that's why many people aren't surviving. By the time your immune system has figured out what to do, your organs have become overwhelmed and you're really sick by that point. And so that's the purpose of vaccine. For those who say, oh, but vaccine slash immunization, which is one and the same, they're just two different words for the same thing. Vaccination is not causing some synthetic immune response. The truth is whether your immune system is responding to the vaccine, 
or an infection, that is your natural response. In fact, with the vaccine, you can mount a more what we call specific response without having to also figure out how to keep your organs healthy. And that's why vaccines work so well. It's why they protect so many people so that the next time when you see the real thing, you can clear it really quickly. You don't make the millions and millions of viral particles that you spread to other people simply because you're breathing. And so you're not only protecting your yourself from getting extremely sick, but you're protecting other people from contracting big amounts of the virus, which can overwhelm them even faster.